When NBA Live 19 dropped in 2018, it was easily the best NBA Live title since Live 10, and it appeared as if EA was back in the basketball video game scene and ready to take on 2K. After NBA 2K18 received a ton of backlash for excessive microtransactions, EA decided to pretend to be the good guy and made sure NBA Live was a more fair, less monetized game. Live 19 received decent reviews and was the best NBA Live in nearly a decade. We finally had competition in the NBA video game landscape once again. It was a return to the glory days, and for years to come, we would all have to carefully choose between Live or 2K, with both companies fighting back and forth attempting to release the best possible game and earn our purchase. Except that didn't happen. Instead, NBA Live 19 was the last NBA Live. So what happened? I actually bought NBA Live 19 when it came out because I wanted to try something different. After playing 2K for years and having some nostalgia for the older NBA Live titles from the 2000s, I saw NBA Live at Best Buy for a lot less than 2K and figured, why not? I enjoyed the game at first. I thought the graphics were pretty good, especially the courts, I liked the ESPN presentation, and I appreciated that I started out as a 70 overall in the career mode. And yet, by December of that year, 2018, I had NBA 2K19, and I was no longer playing NBA Live. Live 19, while not a bad game, it just felt off, like the great value version of 2K. While the game felt different than 2K, I think a lot of people overrate this game simply because it's different. The NBA aspects of the game, from the on-court details to the player models, to the gameplay, to how player ratings work, they just weren't detailed enough. Like pretty much every other EA Sports game, NBA Live 19 lacked a lot of detail, and strangely enough, a few major video game news outlets credited Live 19 for having great attention to detail. A big reason I make these videos is because you cannot trust these reviews that come up when you google a sports game. Most sports game reviews are a complete waste of time written by somebody who has no business reviewing a sports game. Live 19 had franchise mode, and it was fine, but it was also barren. You simply played games, drafted players, and signed free agents. There was no relocation, league rule changes, or basically anything customizable that you would find in NBA 2K19's My League mode. It was the bare minimum, but at least it worked. That's where we're at nowadays. Games get credit for just working. I don't think Live 19 was a bad game. Coming from NBA Live 18, it was a solid improvement. NBA Live 13 was canceled, as was Live 17. You guys know the NBA Elite 11 story. It was great that NBA Live existed again and was a passable game. It's not like the NBA parts of the game were terrible, they just weren't as good or as realistic as 2K's. For example, in Live 19, you can put Al Horford at point guard and shoot step back fadeaway off the dribble threes and make them. I played with the Sixers against a friend, put Horford at the point, and did that all game long. I'm sorry, but no matter how much you dislike 2K, even in 2K19, you couldn't do that. Big men are slower and more balanced in 2K, and that's expected as 2K was always a solid playing game at its core. Online, however, things start to swing in Live 19's favor. Live 19 introduced female creative player, a first for a AAA NBA title. While 2K added the WNBA in 2K21, Live had it since 18. If you were a female player looking for some representation in a video game, you may have been more interested in these recent Live titles than most people. EA's version of the park wasn't like 2K's, so there was no city or neighborhood to walk around in, but you could play online games of 3v3 in a park-like setting, and guess what? It wasn't pay to win. Everyone started out as a 70, and upgrading your player was really easy. The mode also rotates between real-life iconic street courts, which is a really cool touch, coming from 2K's bland generic park courts. This was the best thing about Live 19. But simply being less predatory than the competition doesn't exactly earn you the customer's respect. At the end of the day, this was still NBA Live past its prime, even if it felt like a resurgence. Think of DeMarcus Cousins on the Nuggets last season. He seemed like he was finally back in the NBA, competing at a decent level, 
but he was nowhere near being the same player he was in his prime, and right now he's currently unsigned. That's NBA Live 19. It was a bounce back, but it wasn't better than the competition, and it no longer exists because EA simply doesn't have the ability or the resources or the higher ups that want to invest the resources into their games to do a better job than 2K. At least from what they've shown me, that's what I believe. I would welcome another NBA Live because I used to love NBA Live. and 2K needs the competition, as their online modes have become more pay to win than ever before. But I'm not going to tell you that Live 19 was a great game because it wasn't. It was a mediocre, average NBA game that was so desperate for attention that it was marketed as the cheaper, less predatory NBA game. The fact that a company would take such a strategy, a company that has a strong and current history of using predatory microtransactions in paid games, was a bizarre symptom of a larger issue and felt disingenuous. I think EA's best course of action, as I've mentioned before, would be to bring back NBA Live as NBA Street, as the street name wasn't tarnished by low quality games in the past. I mean, let's be honest, how many of your friends would want to play a new NBA Live? Probably not many because they'll just play 2K, but a new NBA Street? That would be a major hit. Imagine an online NBA street game that isn't pay to win, has solid street ball gameplay, and doesn't have to face the pressure of trying to simulate real NBA basketball or compete with what 2K has built. If EA is watching this, and for some reason actually wants to listen to me, drop a new NBA street and compete directly with 2K's Park Online. That would be EA's best shot at having a relevant basketball game, because as much as I'd love to see NBA Live return to glory, it just doesn't seem realistic. Interestingly, NBA Live 19 does still have a small but vocal community. The servers are still up, and people still play. There are YouTube videos of players breaking down gameplay footage trying to explain exactly how Live is better than 2K. There are players so fed up with 2K that they play Live out of spite, some people just really enjoyed Live 19, and that's simply why they still play it. At the end of the day, if you're looking for something a little cheesy, a little lifeless, and a little basic, but something different from 2K, something that feels different, something a bit fresh, Live 19 is not bad. You can have fun with the game. The best part is definitely the career mode and playing online, and despite its flaws, this is still a passable NBA game. And the game is usually on sale. If you've never played it, I would recommend it. Not for $30 on the PlayStation Store, but if you ever see it on sale for $10 or less, I would recommend to give it a try. Let me know what you think of the game, and thanks for watching.